Protocolysis for Women in Preterm Labor. Background. Preterm birth, defined as birth at less than 37 plus 0 weeks of gestation, is the most important single determinant of adverse infant outcome in terms of both survival and quality of life. Very preterm birth accounts for 1.4% of UK births, but 51% of infant deaths. Although birth at 32 plus 0 to 37 plus 0 weeks of gestation is associated with less risk than very preterm birth, there is growing recognition that even this moderately preterm birth is associated with increased risk of infant death. Risk of death or neurosensory disability increases with decreasing gestational age. Preterm birth may have huge psychosocial and emotional effects on the family as well as being costly for health services. Prevention and treatment of preterm birth is important not as an end in itself, but as a means of improving outcome for the child. Cervical cerclage is one strategy for prevention of preterm birth. A wide variety of agents have been advocated as suppressing uterine contractions. Those in current use include beta agonist, calcium channel blockers, oxytocin receptor antagonist, prostaglandin synthetase inhibitors, nitric oxide donors, and magnesium sulfate. Uses of tocolysis for women in preterm labor. Does tocolysis prevent preterm birth? Use of a tocolytic drug is associated with a prolongation of pregnancy for up to 7 days, but with no significant effect on preterm birth and no clear effect on perinatal or neonatal morbidity. There is no clear evidence that tocolytic drugs improve outcome and therefore it is reasonable not to use them. However, tocolysis should be considered if the few days gain would be put to good use, such as completing a course of corticosteroids or in utero transfer. Ritodrin has predominantly beta-2 receptor effects, relaxing muscles in the uterus, arterioles, and bronchi. Does the use of any tocolytic drug prevent perinatal or neonatal death and neonatal morbidity? Use of a tocolytic drug is not associated with a clear reduction in perinatal or neonatal mortality or neonatal morbidity. Atosiban causes fetal vasopressin receptor blockade, which could lead to changes in amniotic fluid volume with resultant alterations to fetal renal development and fetal lung development. Although atosiban is licensed in the UK for the treatment of threatened preterm labor, there are insufficient data on long-term outcome for children exposed to atosiban in utero. When should tocolytic drugs be used? Tocolysis may be considered for women with suspected preterm labor who have had an otherwise uncomplicated pregnancy. It is reasonable not to use any tocolytic drug. Women most likely to benefit from use of a tocolytic drug are those who are in very preterm labor, those needing transfer to a hospital which can provide neonatal intensive care, and those who have not yet completed a full course of corticosteroids. Tocolysis should not be used where there is a contraindication to prolonging pregnancy. Any contraindication to prolonging pregnancy is a contraindication to tocolytic therapy. For example, known lethal congenital or chromosomal malformation, intrauterine infection, severe preeclampsia, placental abruption, advanced cervical dilatation, and evidence of fetal compromise or placental insufficiency. Relative contraindications include mild hemorrhage due to placenta previa, non-reassuring cardiotocograph, fetal growth restriction, and multiple pregnancy. In view of the current lack of evidence for any substantive short-term benefit to the baby from tocolysis, 
the possibility of hazard for the mother, and the lack of reliable information about long-term outcome, the available evidence should be discussed with the woman and her partner and their preferences taken into account in determining her care. A senior obstetrician should be involved in the decision to offer tocolysis. Is one tocolytic drug more effective in preventing preterm birth than another? Nifedipine and atosibine have comparable effectiveness in delaying birth for up to 7 days. Compared with beta agonist, nifedipine is associated with improvement in neonatal outcome, although there are no long term data. Although the use of nifedipine for preterm labor is an unlicensed indication, it has the advantages of oral administration and a low purchase price. Cyclooxygenase or COX enzymes contribute to production of prostaglandins which are important in the onset and maintenance of labor. It has been hypothesized that inhibitors of the inducible COX2 enzyme might be effective to colitics with fewer fetal side effects. Indomethacin is the COX inhibitor most commonly used for tocolysis. Short-term use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs in the third trimester of pregnancy is associated with a significant increase in the risk of premature ductal closure. There is no clear evidence that magnesium sulfate reduces the risk of preterm birth. However, Administration of magnesium sulfate to women considered at risk of preterm birth reduces the risk of cerebral palsy. If a woman is at risk of preterm birth, she should receive magnesium sulfate for 24 hours to reduce the risk of cerebral palsy. What are the comparative adverse effects for the women of alternative tocolytic drugs for preterm labor? Beta agonists have a high frequency of adverse effects. Nifedipine, atosibine, and the cyclooxygenase inhibitors have fewer types of adverse effects and they occur less frequently than for beta agonists, but how they compare with each other is unclear. Using multiple tocolytic drugs appears to be associated with a higher risk of adverse effects and so should be avoided. Once a decision is made to use a tocolytic drug, the best choice of drug would be the most effective with the fewest adverse effects, both immediate and long-term. Ritodrine was widely used in the past in the UK and is still in common use in some parts of the world. It has been the most thoroughly evaluated in trials, but like all beta agonists, it has a high frequency of unpleasant, and sometimes severe or potentially life-threatening adverse effects for the woman. Common adverse effects when beta agonists are compared with placebo include palpitations, tremor, nausea or vomiting, headache, chest pain, and dyspnea. Women allocated beta agonists were far more likely to stop treatment because of adverse effects. Rare but serious and potentially life-threatening adverse effects have been reported following beta agonist use and there are case reports of a small number of maternal deaths associated with use of these drugs. Pulmonary edema is a well-documented complication usually associated with aggressive intravenous hydration. Fewer types of adverse effects are reported for the other tocolytic drugs and they occur less frequently. Calcium channel blockers are associated with fewer adverse effects and less need to stop treatment because of adverse effects. Reported adverse effects for nifedipine, the most widely used calcium antagonist, include flushing, palpitations, nausea and vomiting, and hypotension. Nifedipine is contraindicated if the woman has cardiac disease and should be used with caution if she has diabetes or multiple pregnancy 
owing to the risk of pulmonary edema. With atosiban, reported adverse effects are nausea, vomiting, headache, chest pain, and dyspnea. Nausea was statistically significantly increased. A common reason for stopping treatment was injection site reactions. Diabetes and cardiac disease are not contraindications to atosiban. Cyclooxygenase inhibitors are well tolerated by the women. Magnesium sulfate is associated with adverse effects for the women, but as it is ineffective and in delaying preterm birth, it should not be used. Using more than one type of tocolytic in combination with another appears to increase the risk of adverse effects and so should be avoided. What are the comparative effects for the baby of alternative tocolytic drugs for preterm labor? The comparative effects for the baby of alternative drugs are unclear. Most drugs have been compared with beta agonist. There are insufficient data on long-term follow-up for reliable conclusions about the effects on the baby for any of these tocolytic drugs. Nifedipine, the most commonly used calcium channel blocker, crosses the placenta, but whether it has any long-term effect on the child is uncertain. Cyclooxygenase inhibitors cross the placenta and potential adverse effects for the baby include premature closure of the ductus arteriosus with consequent pulmonary hypertension, persistent patent ductus arteriosus, necrotizing enterocolitis, and intraventricular hemorrhage. What are the recommended dose regimens for nifedipine and atosiban? The suggested dose of nifedipine is an initial oral dose of 20 mg followed by 10 to 20 mg 3 to 4 times daily, adjusted according to uterine activity for up to 48 hours. A total dose above 60 mg appears to be associated with a 3 to 4 fold increase in adverse events. Total dose above 60 mg appears to be associated with a 3 to 4 fold increase in adverse events such as headaches and hypotension. A suggested dose of atosiban of an initial bolus dose of 6.75 mg over 1 minute followed by an infusion of 18 mg per hour for 3 hours, then 6 mg per hour for up to 45 hours to a maximum of 330 mg. For atosiban, the recommended regimen is a three-step procedure. An initial bolus dose of 6.75 mg over one minute, followed by an infusion of 18 mg per hour for three hours, then 6 mg per hour for up to 45 hours, to a maximum of 330 mg. For both, duration of treatment is 48 hours. What is the cost effectiveness of tocolysis for preterm labor? Cost effectiveness has not been reported, but the purchase price of atosiban is nearly 10 times than of nifedipine. Should tocolysis be used in multiple pregnancy? There is insufficient evidence for any firm conclusions about whether or not tocolysis leads to any benefit in preterm labor in multiple pregnancy. A series of case reports has suggested an association between nifedipine use in multiple pregnancy and pulmonary edema suggesting that atosiban may be preferable to nifedipine in this context, although this association was not confirmed in a prospective cohort study. Is maintenance tocolytic therapy worthwhile? There is insufficient evidence for any firm conclusions about whether or not maintenance tocolytic therapy following threatened preterm labor is worthwhile. Thus, maintenance therapy is not recommended. Summary If reliable prediction of which women in suspected preterm labor likely to have a preterm birth were possible, 
the use of the colises could be reserved for this woman. Unfortunately, few tests offer a useful predictive value. Fetal fibronectane has been advocated as a promising predictive test, but it may have limited accuracy in predicting preterm birth within 7 days for women with symptoms of preterm labor. Ultrasound assessment of cervical length is also a promising predictive test for symptomatic women. If the decision is made to use a tocolytic drug, nifedipine and atosiban appear to have comparable effectiveness in delaying delivery with fewer maternal adverse effects and less risk of rare serious adverse events than alternatives such as ritodrine or indumethacine.